Ciao. Just when I think I figured this show out, RuPaul has a way of throwing a wrench in there. She has a way of definitely getting you out of your, off your game. Child, I was so stressed out about this. I ended up falling asleep. I was going to do this um, earlier. But child. Dear God. Out of my mind. Child. My neighbors two doors down from me. Um, They got this big ass pit bull. Huge. Mind you, it's already five or six people to stay in the house, but y'all gonna get a big ass pit bull that's the size of a couch in an apartment. And you know, some people don't like to clean up their dog poop. And so, you know, I could step outside my door and get a surprise right there in my damn yard. See, it's gonna be a fight. Why would you have that big old dog in an apartment when you have neighbors? As long as he's always on a the leash, then fine. But if he ain't, you know, kids, careless, they like to play and stuff. What if their dog run, dog run up on somebody? You know, I don't think people think when they do certain things. It's like it's already 16 of y'all over there. You're going to get a child. Look, whatever. Whatever. Bless everybody's heart. That's all I'm say. This is RuPaul's Drag Race. It's hot, y'all. Okay, um... So the episode began, we had lost who we lost. Kahana. You know, everybody loves Kahana. Um, and so, you know, we went straight to the mini challenge. The mini challenge this week was um was honored kinda after Michelle Visage and her singing group Seductive. And um, you know, it's it's like um a, a situation where the girls had to get in a fifteen minute drag. And they had to convince the person behind the door, which was RuPaul, um, to let them in. Um, you know, it was like a, uh, you know, secret backstage type of situation. They wanted to get into the seductive concert, you know. RuPaul was talking to him through the door, had to know the passwords, et cetera, et cetera. It was funny watching it. In my personal opinion, I felt like a carrier and um, Vangie. And uh, who else? I like the carrier of Angie and Raja. I felt like they did the best. Um, but who ended up winning that challenge was Raja and actually Nina West. So Nina West and Raja, they had to pick teams. And this week, the challenge was for the girls to um, create their own kind of um what do you call it the infomercials that's what it was it but they had to pick a certain diva so basically you know you would have I don't know you would have Cher as um the diva for one team and Reba McIntyre for the diva of another team and you know basically you know they had to set it up like you had, he was converting over to that team, that fandom, etc. So, you know, the girls was going back and forth. Um, at first, when they picked the teams, the last two that was left standing was Akira and Mercedes. And which I thought that was a little interesting. And then uh, Bro Brooklyn was just like, you know, I still don't know Akira yet. She's kind of getting lost in the sauce, etc. You know, she has fierce wearing ways, but that's about it. You know, I've been noticing Kira, Akira since the beginning. Um, I think she does just enough. I think she says just enough um, to be like, hey, I'm here. You know, I can imagine how difficult it is being in a situation with 15 girls. Over half of y'all got some of the biggest personalities in the world. And so, you know, you kind of do need that balance. Everybody can't be rah-rah all the time. But, you know, at the same time, I do understand, you know, what Brooklyn or whatever was saying. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I've been noticing, you know, for the most part, you know, we like a carrier, everybody. 
So, you know, I'm just like, okay, you know, she gonna get there. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> um, let me see. So, Team Raja had Raja, Honey, Akira, Plastique, Sugar, and Scarlet. And then on the other team was Nina, Vanjie, Silky, Mercedes, Brooklyn, Evie, and Ariel. Um, and so, Nina, them's team, you know, they pretty much had their stuff together. The name of their stuff was going to be um, IBBN. Um, what was it? The uh, Britney Spears. They chose Britney Spears. The Britney Spears Network, child. So, I was just like, okay. Well, Britney, you know, they, they kept going around the room. They was just like, hey, what's going to be um, a diva that we all know? And, you know, they all decided to go on Britney. Um, Silky, she was saying, um, she was saying uh, Whitney Houston. Uh, but, you know, and some of them was just like, well, whichever one. And it was just like, okay, well, we're just going to do Britney. And, you know, they was working on everything, and they was assigning roles, etc. Badge was going to be the person that uh, convert the people, the the non-Britney believers, uh, you know, going to convert them to a Britney believer and a Britney stand, etc., etc. They pretty much had it set together. Now, the other team, Roger's team, child, um, it was a little less organized. Um... They was, you know, bouncing ideas about different people, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they decided on Mariah. And so, you know, just hearing them talk, and it was just like, yeah, um, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, we all know Mariah, and, you know, know a lot of things about Mariah. It turned out none of them knew anything about Mariah. RuPaul had went over to talk to the girls, um, and was just like, uh, you know, uh, what do you know? What do, what do Mariah call her super fans? They couldn't, they was just like the butterflies. I was just like, no, fool, the lambs. I'm one. I honestly, I would have killed this challenge, I think. I know so much about Mariah, and I don't understand how all y'all decided to choose Mariah, but y'all didn't know nothing about her. RuPaul was literally dropping hints and stuff. I was just like, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. And, you know, they was trying to name some of her songs. They was like, oh, yeah, honey. Um, I believe somebody said, um, uh, Vision of Love. Uh, and, you know, they was just like, oh, yeah, Emotions. And then Raja going to say, I get so emotional, baby. I was like, that's Whitney, not Mariah. What in the hell, child? It was so many cringy moments on this episode. You know, I just don't understand why y'all already had all these hiccups about Mariah in general. I guess they all just thought that it would be easy just to do Mariah because it's Mariah. Um, you know, there's a lot of jokes there. There's a lot of material they can use, but it was just a chop. It was just not landing at all. <clears throat> okay. So we get to um, Nina's team. Nina and... It was Nina and who, sure? Nina and Brooklyn Heights. They were um, the hosts and, you know, Nina was hilarious from the beginning. I'm really proud of Nina. Um... She's somebody who's been kind of fading away as well in the competition. But she actually slayed. Um, it actually ended up working out for her. She ended up, you know, winning the um, challenge at the, you know, when they got to the runway. Um, and, you know, uh, like I said, Vanjie over there, Vanjie was turned up to a thousand. And this time it completely 100% worked. All her turned upness worked completely. Um, it was just so funny. Uh, she had Evie and uh, Mercedes. Uh, you know, she was trying to convert them over to Britney, and you know, she was just acting up and cutting up and cutting a fool. 
And, you know, she had this spray where, you know, it would turn you into a blonde, you know, like Britney. And it was so funny. It was so funny. Mercedes, she was confused again. Um, bless her heart. Um, honestly, I think that a lot of what be going on with Mercedes is just it's a language barrier. I really don't think that. Because I think there's a lot of stuff that she really um, don't understand. But she's, she says that she do. But she just say that just to, you know, be like, okay, you know, get off me. Move on to something else. I really do think that's the main thing when it comes to um, Mercedes. I really do for some reason. I'm very talented though she is, but I'm just saying. Um, then they got to the singing segment. Actually, Ariel suggested that her and Silky work together to, to be the singer's child. They say they're both singers. Judging from what I saw on TV, I don't believe it, but you know, whatever. It was good enough. They got the challenge done. You know, everybody on Nina's team they clearly sat down and they had a clear understanding of what was going on. If they winged it, we didn't know. Because it was really like laid out perfectly. It was really good. Um, you know, Silky and Ariel, they worked together fine. But Silky's still mad and upset about what Ariel said about her. And which I get it, but at the same time. It's like I don't understand why Silky don't know that I love Silky, by the way. Um, I love everything about her, everything she represents. But it's kind of it's a little shocking to me how Silky acts, but she don't think people are gonna like say anything about it. It's it's almost like she don't know or or just expect for everybody just to like her or just to um, go along with you know everything that she does, and which. Personally, I don't. If I was in the competition in the same room with Silky, probably every once in a while, laying on my nerves. But most of the time, it won't because you know, Silky's the homie, and I know plenty of people like Silky, you know, etc. You know, um, but to people who's not experienced a personality like Silky's, I, I, I can imagine it is overwhelming at times. And sometimes you just want to get in your gig, get in your mind, concentrate. You have this loud person over here coming back flips and stuff. So I can imagine that. That's why I don't understand why Silky got that upset. Because it's just like, girl. I mean, you don't. I mean, you're kind of laying out the material for them to sit and, and talk about, sis. I mean, my God. But whatever. Um, but she was just like, I don't hate Ariel, but I want her ears to go home. I was like, dear God. Recently, side note. Recently with some drama. Um. Monique Hart and um, Mercedes, uh, they went on, you know, this little show. Um, oh, I forgot what it's called. It's a club, you know, where all the drag queens go and, you know, they talk about the show, et cetera, et cetera. I've been watching it on YouTube. And, you know, Monique made some comments about Ariel Versace, um, saying that she's an Instagram girl and, and not a TV girl. Um, Vanji also has some choice words for Ariel Versace. You know, after the whole build series um, situation when um, a lot of the girls was overpowering some of the other girls. Couldn't nobody get a word in. Vanjie and Silky was pretty much taking it over. Um, and, you know, Ariel was just like, they're unprofessional and all this kind of stuff. And uh, Vanessa said that she could, she don't care if she drink, drink bleach. <laughs> and they um, apologized to one another. And, you know, a lot of the girls aren't too fond of Miss Ariel, child. I'm so <sighs> mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we get to the second team, child, and theirs was when you uh, WYB when you believe. Um, you know, patronize after the uh, emancipation of Mimi, child. You know, they had some cute references and stuff. Y'all know when you believe it's a song with you know her and Whitney. Um. And so, the host of that was Scarlet and Sugar Cane. I didn't know what the hell Sugar Cane had on. I didn't like it. I thought that wig was crunching much. Um, 
the Scarlet looked like Crocodile Dundee. I didn't know what was going on. And every time she mentioned Mariah's name, she kept doing a shimmy. I was like, what is that about? When has Mariah ever shimmied? Um, I feel like they tried based on just what they, the material they had. Um, but they should have chose somebody else. Because it would have came off more natural. It was it, There's a lot that would have happened. Um, it it would have went by better if they would have chose somebody who they actually know, like legit, legit, versus just watching clips of Mariah, etc. Plus, overall, I kind of felt like instead of them focusing on, you know, being big Mariah fans and trying to convert people over to Mariah Carey fandom, um, it was almost like it's just making fun of Mariah. And that's one thing that just in general just bothers my soul. You know, um, a lot of times people look at the negative in this world over the positive, you know, um, like you'll see her certain negative, um, you'll see certain, um, not so good performances on Mariah and you'll just judge that and base that on her whole career when you forget about 1990 through 1996 who Mariah Carey was and a lot of people just don't do their homework in general or just like know or like understand this the fact that this woman is a national treasure and her contributions to the music industry um so you know it's just like the kids of today they just focus on what they see of Mariah today and it's just like you really don't know the true gift of, you know, Mariah. She's still out there. She's still making good music. She's still sounding great. I love the Caution album. She is a legend. But she is a legend for a reason. Like, look at her full body of work, you know? Know why she has this tremendous fan base. Why she is one of um, one of the members of the Holy Trinity, Whitney Mariah Celine. Know why she is the biggest hella female artist of all time. You know, know these facts. You know, let's just don't throw these around just for no reason, child. Anyway. Um, Akaria was the one that was going to be converted. Plastique. Um, she was going to be the one that was going to convert her. It was awkward and weird. She kept, whenever she brought up Ariana's name, she did this deep demon voice, which it was just so cringeworthy, the entire thing. Honey Davenport and Raja O'Hara got on the piano and started singing. They were singing two different songs. I didn't know what in the world. I say, my God. It was so all over the place. I was just like, did y'all rehearse this at all? I just wonder, you know, I'm not on the show, but I just wonder how much time each team you know, has, has for, for certain challenges and stuff like this. Because it just seemed like they had no time. It seemed like they had 10 minutes to throw this thing together. I don't know. I pray. I pray and I hope and I wish and I pray. But it was something else. I was just like, dear God. Um. Okay, so we can pretty much just get to the runway. Like, there was no funny moments, unfortunately, at all. I've never seen a team, even even if there's certain people in the team that does bad, you know, you still have certain people that do good. I This entire team, uh, Raja's entire team, all of it, it was terrible. Every single, there was nothing, like, positive, everybody bombed, and, and it, it was unfortunate and hard to watch. And I really did feel bad. I was just like, good Lord, you know. That's a lot of people to, um, yeah. Um, okay. So, you know, we get behind the stage, shall we see a romance blossoming between Banshee and Brooklyn. They kissed each other in the mouth and stuff. And I was just like, what in the world is going on here? I was like, oh, Roy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Evie, she all naked. She painted herself pink. Let me tell you something. She literally had everything hanging out. She painted her entire body from head to toe pink. That's some dedication, first of all. Where'd she get all that pink paint? Secondly, child, when they saw, when they told Evie, when they showed Evie, you know, putting it around her back, her butt, etc., etc., 
When I tell you, Dawn, uh, Raja gonna say, she gonna say, I hope you throwing those sponges away because you gonna get pink eye or something, bitch. When she said that, I screamed and hit the floor. Y'all, I laughed so hard when she damn said that. I was like, I can't take it. I can't. I fell out. It was so funny. It was so random. I was like, dear God. Um, you know, we get to the runway. Uh, RuPaul looked cute. Uh, the the category was fringe. Sugar cane. She had on this Indian inspired outfit. Um, I thought it was pretty, but it 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 was a lot going on. It was a lot of makeup, a lot of headdress, a lot. You know, it was a necklace. It was everything was just a lot. It was a lot piled on top of each other. Uh, Vanji looked like a showgirl. It was a very simple fringe, you know, outfit. Very, you know, Beyonce. Um, Brooklyn, you know, she had on a flower dress, you know, with the flower headband. It was simple, but it was, you know, it was cute. There was something weird going on with Brooklyn hips. I didn't know what was going on. Evie killed it. She was literally a jellyfish. Literally. Just tentacles hanging down everywhere. She had the umbrella. Everything. It was fabulous. Evie, Evie is really turning out to... to Not just, you know, as a... Um, Runway-wise, but as a person. Evie is really turning out to be one of my favorites. Um, Silky Nutmeg Ganage was serving. Tina Turner Realness. She was giving us Dream Girls. Just an all-fringe... Um, dress. Um, I did not like the shoes, though. I didn't think the shoes fit. Um, but Silky was doing it. Um, hmm. Who else? Oh, Nina. Child, Nina came out looking like a mop. But it was a fierce mop. Just white fringe all over. She even had a headpiece. She didn't even have real hair. She had a headpiece. It was just fringe. It looked like dreads. I was like, come through, Nina. Come through, Nina West. Mm-hmm. I was about to say Nina Flowers. What else happened? Anybody else that stood out to me? I don't think so, child. Okay, um So the winner of the challenge, the team wise, was of course Nina's team. And you know, they went behind the stage. So it was time for Roger's team to get the roast child and boy did they roast them. RuPaul ended up doing a fast round asking everybody who do you think is to blame for this and they unanimous, unanimously said each other which I appreciate the fact that they, they stood together and they didn't throw one person under the, under the bus I appreciate that and to be honest if Mercedes was on the opposite team she probably would have been going home you know Nina's team, they worked together and they pretty they saved Mercedes. So thank God she was on that team for real. I truly do believe that. Mm-hmm. But all the sisters they stuck up together. It was just like child, we all to blame. Um what's the child's name? Plastique, she got out there and, and she was just like, Yeah, um I'm from Vietnam and I just recently discovered Beyonce four years ago and you know, she don't have a lot of pop references, and um, she was just like, yeah, over there in Vietnam, you know, they don't play Mariah Carey, etc. Now, I will say this. When I went to the Dominican Republic last year, you know, we was talking, you know, some of the people that live there, and, you know, we was naming certain people. They was just like, yeah, we know who they are, but they don't play them over here. So, maybe I can attest to some of what she's saying, but, you know... Like Akira said in Untuck, there's internet everywhere. There's, there's like, come on, you ain't, ain't nobody ran across a screen like screen over here from America. Like, come on, sis. You know, I definitely do think sometimes they let Plastique get away with certain things because she's pretty. I do. I do. I do. I do. But that's just life in general, ain't it? Um. Oh, honey, Davenport, her look um, on the runway. It was a lot. I like the whole ensemble of it. It was jet black. She was going to a funeral. 
fringe on the top, fringe on the bottom. But then she had on a hat that had full of fringe. She was giving rating from Mortal Kombat. I was like, okay. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. It looked heavy. It looked too big for her. I liked the concept. But I felt like it would have worked without the hat. The same with Mercedes Iman. Um, she had on this green... Um, it was a black bodysuit, but it had green fringe coming down. Very showgirl. Very, um, um, yeah, that whole ram. It was simple, too, but she had the hat that had the same kind of style. She didn't need the hat, I felt. But, you know, hey. Okay. So the girls got out there, child. Don't you know RuPaul said that all y'all about the lip sync for your life? I was done. I was done. This is the first time in Drag Race history on a season, on a regular season of Drag Race, not even All Stars, that a whole entire team had to lip sync for their life. We didn't know what was going on. I was just like, I know they're not going to cut this show short and get rid of six girls that quick. I know they're not about to do that. Um,. It was crazy. They ended up uh, lip syncing to Waiting for the Night. Honey Davenport was putting her all into it. She really was feeling it. Um, she was giving a lot of emotion. But Waiting for Tonight is not that song to give all that. Um, I instantly, you know, was watching them and Plastique was doing her thing. I was like, they ain't gonna let Plastique go. Um, I got nervous about a carrier because the carrier, oh, she had on this beautiful outfit. She had like a chandelier on top of her head. It was stunning. Um, but she took that off and it was just, you know, boy scalp. You know, RuPaul, how she feels about the girls who be, you know, giving boy scalp. But, you know, Akira was doing her thing. I saw Raja doing her thing. Sugar was okay. I really didn't know what to do. How to think. Okay. So, RuPaul, she saved Plastique. Then she saved Raja. She saved Akira. Then she saved Sugar. She saved Scarlet. And that left Honey Davenport to go home. Uh, you know, all the girls are very close to Honey Davenport, you can tell. And Honey Davenport come from a lineage of bad bitches um so it's really unfortunate that she I do feel like she did not get the chance to show her true self and true drag but it's just how things shake out sometimes on these shows and just in life in general um but unfortunately I have to say this as well do I feel like Honey Davenport has that it factor I don't really get that from her Silky has the it factor. Vanjie has the it factor. Um, Brooklyn has the it factor. Plastique has the it factor. Not that they're so much more talented. Evie has the it factor for sure. Not that they're so much more talented, but it's just they have that thing. They have the it factor that thing that makes people want to like them, that makes people want to, um, you know, be around them, to be interested in them as a person, not just as a drag queen, you know, they just have that, that pizzazz, that boom, they're superstars, you know, but this is not the end of Honey Davenport at all, she's super talented, and she's going to be fine, she's a strong girl, she's from New York, she got this, for sure, it's unfortunate, it really is unfortunate. I do feel like she should have stayed in this competition. I do. I really wish Rue would have just not let anybody go on this episode. I really do. Just give the girls one more chance, then send somebody, you know, home. Because just in my humble opinion, I do feel like Mercedes should have went home before Honey, for sure. And I love Mercedes, but that's just true team. All right. Shout out to Untuck. 
Silky over there acting a fool, showing out, getting mad, you know, because she got mad about the fact that they were saying this is a Britney religion and Britney is God, you know, but they was just like, you ain't have no reason saying Whitney is God. It was just like Whitney, he has a close connection to God. And all this kind of stuff, it just made no sense to me. I'm just like, girl, it's the challenge. I mean, you didn't have a problem with last week's challenge when they was making fun of um, Get Out and um, Black Panther. Didn't, didn't nobody have a problem with that or saw the issues with that? Making fun of, you know, two of the most popular black movies, you know, of our generation. You know, kind of making fun of, of, of the the beauty overall in it. You know, that didn't nobody, you know, we, we make fun of black culture and African American culture and, 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 and all the time. And nobody has a problem with that. But you sitting here worried about a religion thing and people say it was a joke. This entire thing was a joke. This whole, you know, um, single episode, you know, with that challenge. And you was on the winning team. And y'all hold safe. So what was y'all arguing about? It was weird to me. Evie, Evie, Evie's not the one. Evie will read you. Evie will get, Evie will get you down. Evie do look like she don't take baths so side note. But you know, but so hard. But Evie will get you Evie will read you down. She will. And she was getting silky together. She scared. She was just like, look, sis. I didn't understand. What did y'all have to argue about? Y'all was on the winning team. I mean I thought it was pointless. But you know, whatever, child. She tore off her dress, silky, and she was uh, ready to lip sync for her life. She was like, I was prepared to lip sync. I was ready. I was going to give it to him. And everybody should be ready to lip sync. Hello? You never know what can happen. It, was that all that happened on Untuck? I think so. But this said, uh, Mr. Chalaki. Mr. Chalaki on Google Plus. Follow me at Excuse on Instagram and Twitter. At Excuse with 89 on Snapchat. Chase King on Facebook, Mr. Chalaki on Cash Up and PayPal. Run me my money or run me my fade. Run me my money the way I get paid. Love you so much. Stay black, stay tuned. I'll see you guys later.